Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 9, Rotation of Rigid Bodies, Video 4. Today's topic is energy and rotational motion. The objectives are know the meaning of body's moment of inertia about a rotation axis, to understand how the moment of inertia relates to rotational kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of one particle of a rigid rotating body. A rotating rigid body has kinetic energy, so we can express this kinetic energy in terms of the body's angular speed and a new quantity, and that quantity called moment of inertia. This moment of inertia depends on the body's mass and how the mass is distributed. So let's consider a body as being made up of many large number of particles with mass m1, m2, and so forth at a distance r1, r2 from the axis of rotation. So we label the particle with the index i, the mass of i the particle mi, and the distance of that particle from the axis is ri. ri is the perpendicular distance from the axis to the i -th particle. So when a rigid body rotates about a fixed axis, the speed of vi of the i -th particle is given by this quantity vi equals ri times omega. Omega is the body's angular speed. So different particles have a different values of Ri, but omega is the same for all of them. Kinetic energy of the ith particle, therefore, is one half mi vi squared. Vi equals Ri times omega. So that equals one half mi Ri squared times omega squared. That's the kinetic energy of one particle. Now, if you have a body, so that you have uh, so many particles to to find the total energy you simply add all the particles together so since um this is the sigma means sum of all the ice particles all the different particles together since omega is the same for all the particles so you can factor in omega out so here's one half is also the same so it becomes one half of sum of the particles mi times ri squared times omega squared. So omega squared is a constant, one half is constant. So the whole, whole thing in the middle, this is the sum of all the particles of the particles mass times the distance from the axis squared. The quantity obtained by multiplying the mass of each particle by the square of its distance from the axis of rotation and adding this product is denoted by i. And this quantity is called the moment of inertia of the body for this rotation axis. So I is the sum of all the uh, particles added together. Mi r1 squared plus m2 r2 squared and so forth. This is a definition of a moment of inertia. The I's I unit for moment of inertia is kilograms times meter squared. So moment of inertia, one thing is uh, you need to know, be aware, is depends on the distance from the ax axis. So let's take a look at this picture. The top one, you'll have a smaller moment of inertia because that R is much smaller. The bottom, you'll have a larger moment of inertia. So as a result, it's very easy to start uh, apparatus rotating. On the bottom, it is harder to start it rotating. So for a body with the given rotation axis and the given total mass, the greater the distance from the axis to the particles that makes up the body, the greater the moment of inertia. Since kinetic energy equals to amount of work to accelerate the body from rest, so the greater the moment of inertia, the harder it is to start body rotating from rest, or it's harder to stop it if it's already rotating. K equals one half i omega squared. The bigger the i, the more k you have. Let's take a look at our first example, how to calculate moment of inertia. So engineer is designing a machine part consisting of three heavy disks linked by lightweight struts. What is moment of inertia of this body about an axis through the center of disk A perpendicular to the plane of the diagram? So you have three particles. That's MARA squared plus MBRB squared. RB is 0.5 and C is uh, um, 0.2 times 0.4 squared. So how is this rotating? It's rotating like this, okay? It's in the plane of this um, screen. But what is RA? RA equals to zero because there is no RA. So it's just B 
mb times rb squared plus mc times rc squared. So that is a moment, moment of inertia around axis A. Next one, what is the moment of inertia about an axis through the center of a B and C? In this case, your rotating A would be rotating perpendicular to the screen in this surface. Now, this one would be MA times 0.4 squared plus MB times 0 squared plus MC times 0 squared. So the answer is just 0 0.048 kilograms times meter squared. So if the body rotates about an axis through A perpendicular to the plane of the diagram, what uh, with the angular speed omega equals 4 radians per second, what is its kinetic energy? Kinetic energy equals 1 half I omega squared. What is I? I, you have to look at uh, moment of inertia around A, which is 0 0.057. So that's the one you need to use times omega squared. So you have 0 0.46 joules. So the result show the moment of inertia for the axis through A is greater than that for the axis through B and C. Hence, of the two axes, it's easier to make the machine part rotate about axis through B and C instead of A. Question, moment of inertia depends on the choice of axis. So from the results of last example, we can conclude that moment of inertia of a body depends on the location and orientation of the axis. So it's not enough just to say the moment of inertia of this body is 0 0.048 kilograms times meter squared. You'll have to be specific and say the moment of inertia of this body about axis through B and C is 0 0.048 kilograms times meter squared. So the example we did is for discrete mass. You have different particles. What about if a body's continuous distribution, such as a baseball bat or a cylinder or a plate? Then this sum will become an integral. So we'll need calculus to calculate moment of inertia in that case. So here are some common objects with its moment of inertia given. As you can see, these are both bars, but if you change the axis, moment of inertia change. In this case, why it's bigger at the end, it's because the mass is further away from the axis than if the axis is in the middle. Similarly for the solid cylinder and thin water cylinder. So the mass is more away from the axis than the solid cylinder. So I is bigger. Question, computing the moment of inertia. So you may be tempted to try to compute the moment of inertia of a body by assuming that all the mass is concentrated at the center of a mass and multiply the total mass by the square of the distance from the center of the mass to the axis. To resist this temptation, it will not work. For example, in the last slide, we saw that a uniform thin rod length L and mass M is pivoted about an axis through one end perpendicular to the rod, that moment of inertia is one third ml squared. So if we took the mass as concentrated at a center, that, that would be distance L over two from the, x, uh, the axis, you will get I equals M times L over two squared. That will become one fourth ml squared, which is incorrect. So don't try to, uh, for that temptation, it will not work. You'll have to use the integral for continuous mass. Let's take a look at another example. A light flexible non-stretching cable is wrapped several times around a winch drum. A solid cylinder of mass 50 kilograms and diameter of 0.12 meters, which rotates about a stationary horizontal axis held by frictionless bearings. The free end of the cable is put with constant 9 newton force for 2 meters. It unwinds without slipping and turns the cylinder. So if the cylinder is initially at rest, find its final angular speed and the final speed of the cable. So how do we do this? So we know force, we know the distance. If we know force and distance, you know work. And work equals the change in kinetic energy of the system. So work equals the change in kinetic energy. Uh, kinetic energy before is a zero because it was at rest. The drum was at rest. The kinetic energy after is just one half I omega squared. So what is work? Work equals the force times distance. That equals the change in kinetic energy. But let's find I first. I equals one half mr squared. How do I know this? From the chart, 
This is a disk. A solid disk is mR squared. So r is 0 0.06 because that's 0 0.12 is diameter. So you get 0 0.09 kilograms times a meter squared. Substitute in force times distance equals one half i omega squared. You will have omega. Now, what is the speed? How is speed related to omega? Speed equals r times omega. So that gives you 1.2 meters per second. So if the mass of the rope cannot be neglected, in most cases, that's true because you have to have something heavier than just a very thin um, cable. Then some of the work done would have to go to the kinetic energy of the cable. Hence, the cylinder would end up with less kinetic energy and a smaller angular speed when we calculate here. So for example, when you do the mass here, when you do what if we do a lab here we we calculate um this speed that could be one of the um experimental errors is to neglect we neglected the mass of the rope so in fact that mass is may not be negligible let's take a look at another example so we wrap a light flexible cable around a solid cylinder with the mass m radius r, the cylinder rotates with neg negligible friction about a stationary horizontal axis. We tie the free end of the cable to a block of mass m and release the object with no initial velocity at a distance h above the floor. As the block falls, the cable unwinds without stretching or slipping. Turning the cylinder, find the speed of falling block and angular speed of the cylinder just as the block strikes the floor. So... <clears throat> We can use kinematics trying to find the tension. Then we can use work to find the uh, as last example, or we can just use the energy concept. So energy before is E y equals m g h. That's a mass, and energy after both mass block is moving, so is the cable is moving. So since the only force doing work is gravity, total mechanical energy is conserved. E y equals to E two. We said. V equals R times omega, so omega equals V over R. So we have this MGH equals one half MV squared plus one half I omega squared. From here, you can solve for V. Then the next one, you have to find angular speed. Omega equals V over R equals to this. So here is a special case. When this M is much, much bigger than the little M, V is very small because most energy is spent to rotating the disk. But if the disk's mass is much, much smaller than the mass of the block, then V is almost equal to 2GH. It's almost like free fall. So remember, this V does not depend on the radius of the cylinder at all. Next the concept is gravitational potential energy of extended body. In this case, gravitational potential energy is MGH. This is the center of the mass. For example, if you have a bar, you release it. What is the changing potential energy? Changing potential energy equals mg times one half of L because that's the center of mass has full half of the length. Okay, last to check your understanding. Suppose a cylinder and a block in, last, in the example have the same mass just before the block strikes the floor. Which statement is correct about the relationship between kinetic energy of the falling block and the rotational kinetic energy of the cylinder? So let's see. Block is one half mv squared, the cylinder is one half i omega squared. So this is i, this is omega, so it turns out to be one fourth mv squared. If little m equals to big M, then the block has more kinetic energy than the cylinder. So the answer is i. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.